Are you shooting for me? Uh, for the post. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, I appreciate the interest in this issue. I think it's um, an interest that the city shares, and so I'm pleased to see so many people out today. I also want to acknowledge uh, the colleagues that have worked with us on this plan, uh, particularly Councillor Mahavit, uh, Commissioner Ajamari, Commissioner Cole, and Commissioner Cho. So thank you very much. There are others as well uh, that may be coming by to join the press conference, but I did want to give a special acknowledgement to those who've been so supportive of this plan. So we, let me uh, quickly, by way of introduction, we're calling this plan One City. We've, we've had many names for various transit plans, but I think what we learned from the last debate was that there was a division between what the suburbs felt they were getting in terms of transit and what the downtown core, what they believed the downtown core was getting in transit. And that we think it's very important that we bring the city together as one city. And that as we think about a transit plan, we have a transit plan that serves every corner of the city so that all residents, whether they live in the suburbs or the downtown core, have the same access to transit and the same ability to connect to jobs and get home on time and be with their families. So that was a, a, an important step forward that we thought we wanted to make and uh, when we were thinking about this plan. And uh, so with that, let me turn it over to my colleague and vice chair, Councillor Glenda Bearmaker, so he can go through uh, some of the transit plans that we're talking about. Uh, uh, thank you, Karen. Um, as the vice chair of the TTC and as a Scarborough City Councillor, uh, I'm very pleased to uh, outline some of the spectacular lines that are in this 30-year, $30 billion transformative transit plan that actually has a funding plan. And we think uh, if we can get the support of Council, we will be building transit, uh, close to a billion dollars worth of transit every year for 30 years. Uh, starting off in the east end, uh, the line that uh, is close to my heart is Scarborough Centre Councillor is ensuring, is replacing the proposed Scarborough RT line uh, with a Scarborough subway line. So the Blur Danforth subway line would extend from the Kennedy st subway station straight up to the Scarborough Town Centre and terminate at McCowan Road and Shepherd Avenue on the doorstep of our beautiful Malvern community north of the Highway 401, serving 300,000 people north of the 401 now with the subway, uh, which they don't have access to right now. Um, when you look at the other lines in this proposal, and anyone wanting to get a detailed review of these can go to onecitytransitplan.com, and if you look at the onecitytransitplan.com website, you'll see the Go Stouffville line um, being recommended by us as a Scarborough Express line. We're recommending that the tracks on that line be doubled and that either a uh, second set of Go trains, at surface subway trains or LRT vehicles be put on that line to provide an express service so that people in Scarborough and people at Kennedy Station can skip all the stations along the Danforth line, can, can skip the Young Blur interchange and go straight downtown uh, to Union Station on this line. We also have extensions of the uh, LRT, Shepherd LRT line that's already been approved by Council uh, out to Meadowville and out to the Toronto Zoo in the Rouge Valley National Park. Uh, a line going up to the Malvern Town Centre where we expect massive development in the future and has a great demand now uh, of people who are underserved for transit as well as an LRT line uh, out to Malvern along Edmonton Avenue and our bus lines, dedicated bus lines along Ellesmere and Kingston Road. Uh, if we go over to the opposite end of the city into the west end, we're again proposing an Etobicoke Express line. This is uh, also known currently as the Air Rail Link right now. Uh, we're proposing that this line be electrified. <coughs> we're proposing that this line have additional uh, stops built so that it'll be a local commuter line as well. It can still take express uh, trains from the airport to Union Station, but it gives the flexibility and ability for local people living in the city of Toronto to hop on a subway, again, skip the, the congested Young Bloor uh, in interchange and go straight down to Union Station. And we're proposing as well that this line will become available to anybody who has a Metro Pass or a Presto card and that you will not have to pay $22.50 to get onto this line. Uh, when we look at the West End, we're, we're recommending that the Finch West LRT be extended all the way out to the airport. The Eglinton Crosstown uh, LRT also be extended all the way out to the airport so that you can see both in the West End and the East End, we have a large loop system so that wherever you are in the City of Toronto, you have a spider web uh, or a network of rail lines that you can get to virtually anywhere in the city any way that you want to get there. 
We're also proposing a Shepherd West subway line to connect the two existing subway lines, also referred to as some as the uh, North York Relief Line, um, as well as the extension of the Finch West LRT all the way over to the Young Station, and extending the Young Subway north to uh, to Steeles and beyond up to Highway 7. Uh, when we look at the, uh, the, the north part of the city, we're looking at rail lines along Don Mills from Steeles down to Eglinton. We have Jane uh, LRT in the west. Um, that again connects our, our city together. And finally, if, if you look at the south end of the city, uh, people have long called for a downtown relief line. And we've all hated that name so much, we've, uh, we've renamed it the Don Mills Express Line. And what we're proposing that we'll go forward to Council is a line that will go from King or Queen Station uh, up to the Danforth Line, then north of the Danforth Line all the way to Don Mills and Eglinton, which means somebody living at Don Mills and Steeles could get in on LRT, go straight down to Eglinton, and at Eglinton, do a transfer onto a subway system, takes them down to Danforth, they can go along the Danforth Line, if they choose not to, they can go straight downtown, and again, take pressure off that young line, so people on the Eglinton Station, or the Davisville Station, or the Wellesley Station can actually get on a train. Right now, we know that there's physically no more capacity left on that young line for people to get onto that, to, to that system. If you look at uh, the list of projects here, uh, this is a $30 billion proposal. It includes rapid transit of all forms. It includes trains to do the heavy lifting, subways to do the heavy lifting, where there is heavy demand. It calls for LRTs where there is substantial demand, and it calls for buses where there is demand, but not enough demand to merit either an LRT or a subway system. Uh, when you look at that, uh, that $30 billion of implemented would bring us about 170 kilometers of new lines across the city of Toronto. Councillor Stintz and I are also going to council proposing that the first two lines uh, to be built, the first uh, priority out of this large pool of priority projects, we are recommending be the Scarborough subway. We want to build the Scarborough subway from the Kennedy Station through the Scarborough Town Centre, north of Shepherd Avenue, where we have now $1.8 billion committed by Metrolinx. If we create a dedicated transit fund in the City of Toronto where every penny going into that fund is dedicated solely for the purpose of building and maintaining transit, Councillor Stintz and I are recommending that the first allocation from that fund be put towards that the difference of about $484 million uh, to make sure that we have that long-term capacity to serve this uh, ex expanding uh, area. So we're recommending the Council at Scarborough get a subway built as a first priority project. The second, uh, well the advantages to that I'd just like to highlight, I think most people if you've ever been out in the East End uh, know that. Uh, first of all, we avoid closing down the Scarborough Rapid Transit line that, that thousands upon thousands of people are currently taking for over four years. Right now the current plan is to shut down that line to build an LRT line on the exact same line. You can't run trains and build new trains at the same time, so the line would be shut down for four years or more. You'd have shuttle buses going back, back and forth to Kennedy Station, causing traffic congestion for cars, uh, transit congestion for transit riders, and, and a, a very large inconvenience for people taking the system. Under our proposal, you can operate the existing SRT system for four years, five years, once you finish constructing the subway. You actually close the, the SRT line on a Monday and you open the subway line on a Tuesday. And the people getting on that S, the, the new subway line don't have to make that transfer at Kennedy Subway Station. You can get on at Shepherd and go all the way downtown without having that to, to run down the six flights of stairs or the three, three flights of, of escalators. Um, this will uh, mean for us a subway system that works. Uh, people have talked about why subways here and why sub not subways in other locations. The, the, it's a very simple answer. There are people here that will use the subway. There's enough demand on this line today that we believe merits a subway system and the growth is exponential. So we have the demand today. All you have to do is go in and, and drive, or, or sorry, not drive, but uh, take the SRT today. And what you're going to see are thousands upon thousands of people squished like sardines in, in that line. The first day that this subway system opens, it's going to be very busy and very successful. We also want to highlight, and uh, I don't know if I think that this will be uh, lost on, on many people, that our second priority in terms of this pool of, of tr uh, transit projects 
from this dedicated transit fund will be a light rail line in downtown Toronto along Waterfront East. We're hoping this can be done quick enough to be in place for the Pan Am Games, to take people from the Pan Am Village back and forth, and to make sure, as you can see from, from this uh, artist concept of, of what our downtown uh, uh, east, east Waterfront is going to look like, to spur the economic growth that we already know is there. We have colleges open, we have businesses opening. Uh, we need this line. The line right now is, is partially funded by Waterfront Toronto. It is short about $200 million of funding. And Councillor Stintz and I are recommending that if we create this dedicated transit fund, that the second allocation of second priority project uh, be that, uh, that light rail system down in the City of Toronto. Um, I, I think Councillor Stintz and I, looking at this large pool of project, have realized as Chair and Vice Chair of the Toronto Transit Commission that we have funding partnerships for these lines already. We can't say that about, all, that about all the other lines, but when you look at the Scarborough subway line, we have Metrolinx already committing $1.8 billion, and for the uh, light rail line down on, on East Waterfront, we've got uh, about $190 million, uh, about $90 million allocated by Waterfront Toronto. So first, we have funding partnerships already in place, and with their cooperation and partnership, we can extend, extend, extend the plan, I'm sorry, extend the plan, as well there's a sense of urgency. The window for us to be able to create a dedicated fund and to fund a Scarborough subway will close very soon. The, uh, the SRT line that is going before the Ontario Cabinet is approved by Cabinet. That window will close and we will not be able to do this in a year from now. This is why Councillor Stintz and I are doing putting this forward to Council now in, in, in July and then asking uh, for a vote in October so that we can say to the provincial government as a partner, we're willing to make a financial contribution to make sure that there is a subway extended in Scarborough all the way up to Shepherd uh, Avenue. And of course, one of the, the unique and exciting aspects of this one city proposal is that we actually have a funding formula. And I think uh, Councillor Stintz and I know the file very well, and I think a lot of other people do. If you go back over the last three decades, you won't find many funding formulas. We're putting a funding formula forward to our colleagues, asking for their consideration and uh, thoughts and discussions and debate with the staff report coming back in October. So it's, a, it's unique and exciting because it has a funding formula and I'd ask Councillor Stintz, uh, our chair, to go over that funding formula. And what we're hoping to do today is to launch a proposal for consideration of council that actually marries a funding proposal to a longer term vision for transit but also identify certain priorities for investment so people can see that their money is being spent wisely. And we're trying to create that value proposition for people across the entire city. So this funding plan actually is, uh, came out of the work that was done by the expert panel in March. And when they looked at, when we asked them to report back to council on the merits of a, of a Shepherd Subway versus a Shepherd LRT, we also asked them to look at funding. And one of their conclusions was that yes, we needed dedicated funding, we needed a broader vision for transit. And actually one of the recommendations out of that report was that we consider something like this uplift model. So let me talk a little bit about what that is. Some of you that are familiar with the reassessment process as it is know that every few years the impact does a reassessment of all, val of all property values across residential classes. And right now that reassessment process is revenue neutral. So if property values go up by 5%, the mill rate goes down by 5%, as we can see on the slide. So this year what we expect in the fall is that the reassessment process will occur. We expect property values will go up conservatively by about 4.7%. And what we're proposing is that instead of having the process be revenue neutral, that part of that uplift, part of that increase in property value, get dedicated back into a transit fund, specifically for the purposes of building transit. And it makes sense because we know that the single most important contributor to rising property values is the ability of transit close by, or is the availability of transit. So it makes sense to have property values invest in transit because it, again, as you build transit, you're increasing property values, you're building a city, you're investing in your city, you're reducing gridlock, and you're creating one city. So that there is a logic to having a property tax base invest in transit. Now, we know that no taxes are, are, are welcome, and we know that our challenge will be creating the value proposition for this tax. And that's why we want to bring forward a plan and a vision so that people know, yes, this is something that I think I can invest in. 
So as we talk about the model, just before we go to the next slide, as you can see, typically under the reassessment process, the mill rate would get pushed down to 0.53%. What we're proposing is the mill rate still get pushed down, but it just not get pushed down quite as much, and that the dedicated portion of those funds get put into a transit fund. And so what does this mean? What will this mean for the fund? So the first year, in 2013, if successfully implemented, the city could collect $68 million into the fund. It's a cumulative amount that goes up each year to the fourth year, where it becomes $272 million, and it stays at $272 million for as long as we want to keep the fund going. But what that does, it actually allows the city to plan and invest in transit. And it, next slide. So our, our hope and our, what we believe is reasonable is that if we come to the table with some skin in the game, we can convince our other funding partners, the provincial and federal government, to also invest in transit. We know that this uplift model is not going to fund the entire $30 billion, but what we do know is that we will have a dedicated funding stream that will, we believe, encourage other, our other partners to invest in transit. And so what does this mean for the average house? The average household can expect to pay, if this is approved by, by council, approximately $45 per year. Once again, it is cumulative, so the next year it would be 90 then 135 and then 180 it is equivalent to approximately 1.9% property tax increase a year. But what is unique about this model is that it is not subject to the annual budget approval at City Council every year. If we're successful in changing the legislation to allow us to keep a portion of this money and dedicate it into a transit fund, it will be separate and apart from the City's budgeting process. That will make it dedicated and dependable. So the benefits of the One City Funding proposal. Currently, the reality is we don't have a transit plan beyond the four lines that were approved by council. And those four lines are a great start, but they don't go far enough to linking the city together. What we need to have is a vision for transit that brings transit to every part of the city. And it is a transit plan that's a combination of subway, light rail, streetcar, and buses. So bringing this plan forward, again, is part of the value proposition. Asking people to pay, they need to know what they're buying into. And that's what this plan is about. We currently don't have a dedicated city funding mechanism. And so we do rely on the whims of our partners to tell us what, pro what projects they feel are worthy to invest in. And we would like to change that conversation and say, no, there's projects that we think are important for this city that we're willing to invest in, and we believe that they're, we believe that they're important. The most, the most important part of this funding proposal is it's dedicated funding, it's dependable, and it's debt-free. And we believe those are the conditions under which we need to have in order to encourage the private sector to also invest in transit. Because we know bringing our private sector partners to the table is difficult if they don't have certainty in the projects that they're investing in. So this move will go a long way towards encouraging our private sector partners to come on board. So in summary, what is this plan? The longer term vision, six subway trains, six subway lines totaling 71 kilometers, 10 LRT lines totaling 73.5 kilometers, five bus and streetcar lines totaling 26 kilometers. What our hope is, we will bring transit to every corner of Toronto. We will eliminate the divide between the suburbs and the downtown, and we will build one city.